Chapter Two of An Iron Will by Orison Sweat Marden, assisted by Abner Bailey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Rulers of Destiny. There is no chance, no destiny, no fate can circumvent or hinder or control the firm resolve of a determined soul. Gifts count for nothing. Will alone is great. All things give way before it soon or late. What obstacle can stay the mighty force of the sea-seeking river in its course, or cause the ascending orb of day to wait? Each well-born soul must win what it deserves. Let the fool prate of luck. The fortunate is he whose earnest purpose never swerves whose slightest action or inaction serves the one great aim. Ella Wheeler Wilcox There is always room for a man of force. Emerson The king is the man who can. Carlyle A strong, defiant purpose is many-handed and lays hold of whatever is near that can serve it. It has a magnetic power that draws to itself whatever is kindred. T. T. Munger. What is willpower looked at in a large way but energy of character? Energy of will, self-originating force, is the soul of every great character. Where it is, there is life. Where it is not, there is faintness, helplessness, and despondency. Let it be your first study to teach the world that you are not wood and straw, that there is some iron in you. Men who have left their mark upon the world have been men of great and prompt decision. The achievements of willpower are almost beyond computation. Scarcely anything seems impossible to the man who can will strongly enough and long enough. One talent with a will behind it will accomplish more than ten without it, as a thimbleful of powder in a rifle, the bore of whose barrel will give it direction, will do greater execution than a carload burned in the open air. The wills, the won'ts and the can'ts there are three kinds of people in the world, says a recent writer, quote, the wills, the won'ts, and the can'ts. The first accomplish everything, the second oppose everything, the third fail in everything, end quote. The shores of fortune, as Foster says, are covered with the stranded wrecks of men of brilliant ability, but who have wanted courage, faith, and decision and have therefore perished in sight of more resolute but less capable adventurers who succeeded in making port. Were I called upon to express in a word the secret of so many failures among those who started out with high hopes, I should say they lacked willpower. They could not half will. And what is a man without a will? He is like an engine without steam. Genius unexecuted is no more genius than a bushel of acorns in a forest of oaks. Will has been called the spinal column of personality. The will in its relation to life, says an English writer, quote, may be compared at once to the rudder and to the steam engine of a vessel, on the confined and related action of which it depends entirely for the direction of its course and the vigour of its movement." End quote. Strength of will is the test of a young man's possibilities. Can he will strong enough and hold whatever he undertakes with an iron grip? It is the iron grip that takes and holds. What chance is there in this crowding, pushy, selfish, greedy world where everything is pusher or pushed for a young man with no will, no grip on life? The man who would forge to the front in this competitive age must be a man of prompt and determined decision. A Tailor's Needle It is in one of Ben Jonson's old plays, quote, 
when I once take the humour of a thing, I am like your tailor's needle. I go through with it. End quote. This is not different from Richelieu, who said, quote, When I have once taken a resolution, I go straight to my aim. I overthrow all. I cut down all. End quote. And in business affairs, the Council of Rothschild is to the same effect. Quote, do without fail that which you determine to do. End quote. Gladstone's children were taught to accomplish to the end whatever they might begin, no matter how insignificant the undertaking might be. What is worse than rashness? It is irresolution that is worse than rashness. He that shoots, says Felton, quote, may sometimes hit the mark, but he that shoots not at all can never hit it. Irresolution is like an ague. It shakes not this nor that limb, but all the body is at once in a fit, end quote. The man who is forever twisting and turning, backing and filling, hesitating and dawdling, shuffling and parleying, weighing and balancing, splitting hairs over non-essentials, listening to every new motive which presents itself, will never accomplish anything. But the positive man, the decided man, is a power in the world and stands for something. You can measure him and estimate the work that his energy will accomplish. Opportunity is coy, is swift, is gone before the slow, the unobservant, the indolent, or the careless can seize her. Vigilance in watching opportunity, said Phelps, quote, tact and daring in seizing upon opportunity, force and persistence in crowding opportunity to its utmost of possible achievement, these are the martial virtues which must command success, end quote. The best men, remarked Chapin, quote, are not those who have waited for chances, but who have taken them, besieged the chance, conquered the chance, and made chance the servitor, end quote. Is it not possible to classify successes and failures by their various degrees of willpower? A man who can resolve vigorously upon a course of action and turns neither to the right nor to the left, though a paradise tempt him, who keeps his eyes upon the goal, whatever distracts him, is sure of success. Not every vessel that sails from Tarshish will bring back the gold of a fear. But shall it therefore rot in the harbour? No, give it sails to the wind. Conscious power. Conscious power, says Mellers, quote, exists within the mind of everyone. Sometimes its existence is unrealized, but it is there. It is there to be developed and brought forth, like the culture of that obstinate but beautiful flower, the orchid. To allow it to remain dormant is to place oneself in obscurity to trample on one's ambition, to smother one's faculties. To develop it is to individualize all that is best within you and give it to the world. It is by an absolute knowledge of yourself, the proper estimate of your own value." End quote. There is hardly a reader, says an experienced educator, quote, who will not be able to recall the early life of at least one young man whose childhood was spent in poverty and who, in boyhood, expressed a firm desire to secure a higher education. If, a little later, that desire became a declared resolve, soon the avenues opened to that end. That desire and resolve created an atmosphere which attracted the forces necessary to the attainment of the purpose. Many of these young men will tell us that, as long as they were hoping and striving and longing, mountains of difficulty rose before them, but that when they fashioned their hopes into fixed purposes, aid came unsought to help them on the way." End quote. 
hurt them. Do you believe in yourself? The man without self-reliance and an iron will is the plaything of chance, the puppet of his environment, the slave of circumstances. Are not doubts the greatest of enemies? If you would succeed up to the limit of your possibilities, must you not constantly hold to the belief that you are success organized and that you will be successful no matter what opposes? You are never to allow a shadow of doubt to enter your mind that the Creator intended you to win in life's battle. Regard every suggestion that your life may be a failure, that you are not made like those who succeed and that success is not for you, as a traitor and expel it from your mind as you would a thief from your house. There is something sublime in the youth who possesses the spirit of boldness and fearlessness, who has proper confidence in his ability to do and dare. The world takes us at our own valuation. It believes in the man who believes in himself, but it has little use for the timid man, the one who is never certain of himself, who cannot rely on his own judgment, who craves advice from others and is afraid to go ahead on his own account. It is the man with a positive nature, the man who believes that he is equal to the emergency, who believes he can do the thing he attempts, who wins the confidence of his fellow man. He is beloved because he is brave and self-sufficient. Those who have accomplished great things in the world have been, as a rule, bold, aggressive and self-confident. They dared to step out from the crowd and act in an original way. They were not afraid to be generals. There is little room in this crowding, competing age for the timid, vacillating youth. He who would succeed today must not only be brave, but must also dare to take chances. He who waits for certainty never wins. The law of the soul is eternal endeavor that bears the man onward and upward forever. A man can be too confiding in others but never too confident in himself. Never admit defeat or poverty. Stoutly assert your divine right to hold your head up and look the world in the face. Step bravely to the front, whatever opposes, and the world will make way for you. No one will insist upon your rights while you yourself doubt that you have any. Believe you were made for the place you fill. Put forth your whole energies. Be awake. Electrify yourself. Go forth to the task. A young man once said to his employer, quote, Don't give me an easy job. I want to handle heavy boxes, shoulder great loads. I would like to lift a big mountain and throw it into the sea. End quote and he stretched out two brawny arms while his honest eyes danced and his whole being glowed with conscious strength. The world in its heart admires the stern, determined doer. The world turns aside to let any man pass who knows whither he is going. It is wonderful how even the apparent casualties of life seem to bow to a spirit that will not bow to them, and yield to a sister design after having in vain attempted to frustrate it. The man who succeeds, says Prentice Mulford, quote, must always in mind or imagination live, move, think and act as if he gained that success or he never will gain it." End quote. We go forth, said Emerson, quote, austere, dedicated, believing in the iron links of destiny and will not turn on our heels to save our lives. A book, a bust, or only the sound of a name shoots a spark through the nerves and we suddenly believe in will. 
We cannot hear of personal vigor of any kind, great power of performance, without fresh resolution. End, quote. End of chapter 2